Now I'm going to ask Gabrielle Fayon to come up and ask the third question, which is related to youth in the criminal justice system. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Um, so basically, my name is Gabrielle Fayon, and I'm here representing the Ottawa East Vanier region. Um, this question is important to me because it really touches very close to home as a Muslim and an Aboriginal youth. There is a rising concern of improper treatment to Aboriginal visible minorities and women nationally, provincially, and locally with uh, authoritative figures. For example, Aboriginal people only make up 4% of the entire population of Canada, but yet we make up 40% of the total inmate population in jails nationally, and worse yet, 50% of those inmates are women. Um, the population of Aboriginal people is growing rapidly. In Ottawa, for example, it is growing six times faster than the rate of non-Aboriginal people. Of this rapid growth population of many Aboriginal people, many are converting to Islam. Masha'Allah. So the context of this question is, unfortunately we have seen many Muslim youth, particularly those coming from low income and refugee backgrounds, ending up in trouble with the law. At the Ottawa Carleton Detention Center, there are several young Muslim inmates. Concerns over the treatment of inmates at the Ottawa Carleton Detention Center and the poor conditions in the center have made headlines here in Ottawa and have led to class act lawsuits. Many Muslim families have complained that their children have been physically abused in the prison or that they have been refused visitation with their children who are inmates. There is also serious concern that inmates who are diagnosed with mental illness are not receiving proper care. Families are also concerned that there appears to be very little rehabilitation programs within the center in order to ensure that inmates are less likely to reoffend when they are released. In 2010, the Muslim Coordinating Council of Ottawa organized a panel discussion about conditions at the Ottawa Detention Center, where, su where the superintendent at the time, Asfia Sultan, spoke. Soon after, as well as her deputy, were dismissed by the Ontario Ministry of Community Safety and Corrections, and the center is now under new management. Some Muslim parents have expressed that after these dismissals, some, get, some conditions have improved at the center, while others have not. As a community, we are working hard to prevent our children and youth from ending up, ending up in this trouble with the law, which is why your answers to questions one and two are so important to us. However, we do not believe in writing off members of our community who have become criminals, and we are very concerned about their rehabilitation so that, if possible, they can make amends and become contributing members of society. Therefore, we wish to ensure that conditions at institutions such as the Ottawa Carleton Detention Center do not do, not do more harm than good. So the question is, what does your party propose to do in order to improve conditions at the Ottawa Carleton Detention Center? Can funding be available to ensure that prisons and detention centers with significant Muslim populations as well as other non-Christian populations have paid chaplains for these communities to provide religious service and act as liaisons with families and community members. Yes, Mr. McAfee, will the first respond. Thank, uh, thank you very much for asking this question. This is a very important question, and I know the community has been very concerned, and there's been few town hall meetings in that regards as well, with uh, police being, uh, being there present as well, and uh, I've participated uh, in those uh, conversations. Uh, one of the things I know that a lot of work is being done, especially in light of some of the incidents that have taken place recently, vis-a-vis uh, -vis visible minorities um, and uh, some of the Muslim communities uh, via our police service, uh, is of serious concern to everyone. I know Chief White uh, has been taking some very specific actions to ensure uh, that uh, our police services um, obviously operate in the most fair and even-handed fashion. Um, one of the things that I'm very proud that we've done and something that I played a uh, role in facilitating is, is ensuring that uh, community leaders are part of the police services board. So people like Carl Nicholson, who is very Okay, well I'm actually just going to get you back into the center because that's actually a moment um, the Ottawa Police Service, which is great. But we really would like to know that the center is a provincial responsibility. So we'd really like um, response focused on the provincial responsibility because the Ottawa Police Service is actually a municipal 
um, initiative. So thank you. Well, it's a little bit of both, but I think the important point is we need to make sure that our youth are not ending up in the detention center. So I think, Shelby, all those two things are very much related uh, because when we're dealing with the issue uh, in the prison, it's too late. Uh, as a matter of fact, what we need to do is to ensure that our youth are not ending up in the detention center and that is how we're going to prevent uh, uh, things happening in, in the detention center. Um, that is always a challenge as to the conditions in the detention center. I've had the opportunity to go visit the detention center and the kind of services that are provided uh, for in, uh, within the detention center. It's a jail, not the nicest place in the world. I'll be very straight, honest with you. You know, I told you my story. I don't like going to jails. And uh, was I felt comfortable going and visiting uh, and seeing what kind of conditions there? No. And uh, there's always room for improvement. Absolutely yes. And uh, the government is going to keep working hard, make sure that we have resources available so that uh, that, uh, that that the, the services that are provided in the detention center. Uh, uh, for all religions are, are there uh, to make sure that there are books. I know uh, there's volunteers, uh, uh, ministers who uh, go into the detention center. I know that uh, Quran and other religious books uh, uh, are offered within the detention center. But I think what we really need to be focusing on is make sure that our youth are not ending up in the detention center because we've already lost the game at that point. The next respondent will be out, so. Quite frankly, the onus is on the government and on the state to prove that the people that are being detained, that the members of our community who are being arrested uh, are guilty. And I think we also have to be, be very clear about what guilt means when a majority of people being incarcerated are people of color, are aboriginals, uh, our children of new Canadians or new Canadians themselves, then um, we have to raise our eyebrows. I agree with Yasser that we need to be talking about why people are being incarcerated in the first place. Uh, I think that the onus should be on police officers to prove the guilt of the people that are being detained. I realize that's a taboo subject, but I'm not going to play any games by wrapping myself around the flag or the police forces here. There is a fundamental lack of oversight and accountability for law enforcement officials at the federal, provincial, municipal board. And actually, I forgot to mention this earlier, one of the reasons that I decided to become engaged politically was because it became very obvious that in certain respects, the government had far too much control over individuals and communities. Uh, one of the most disturbing instances of this was this summer in Toronto, where we had the largest series of mass arrests in Canadian history. Over 90, 95% of people who were arrested were then detained, were then released after being detained for more than 24 hours without legal counsel. And we're kidding ourselves if we think that this is unique to big international summits once every three years. In some communities, this is a daily reality. I've been door knocking since June. I've been speaking to kids my age and to parents who have been saying that they get stopped multiple times a day by the police. And if in fact they have committed some sort of egregious violation, we need to be questioning why it's people from those communities that are doing it. And I think in many respects, it's a cry out for help. We need to make sure that the counseling is there, that the proper social services are there, so that they're not committing crimes and being detained. Um, and we also need to be questioning what sorts of activities are being criminalized. Um, and again, this might not be the most popular argument, but uh, in Canada, Canada has the highest usage rate of drugs in the world, more than countries where drugs are legal. And it's not going to go away. And the government is spending billions of dollars at the federal and provincial level every year on an inefficacious and draconian war on drugs that has not yielded any positive results. So we really need to be questioning what sorts of activities uh, are being conducted in the first place that are apparently so egregious and illegal, and also why people are engaged in those activities. And I can assure you, most people in detainment centers do not want to be there. And if they had a job, if they could afford to go to school, if maybe they had the access to mental health care that they needed in the first place, they wouldn't be there. So the next respondent will be Wally Park. Uh, thank you. Um, you know, the, so a child 
or a youth to end up in, in a jail. It's something that happened early on. Like, I mean, it's coming from uh, early on, you know, like in the neighborhood, from the school. So, so there are many things that we have to do in the neighborhood level, and then we have to do something at the school level before the child, you know, ends up in, in jail. So that's obvious, but uh, obviously, when it comes to uh, Aboriginal people, Muslim youth, uh, who are overrepresented in all of our uh, detention center, it, uh, the detention center that's actually overcrowded already, and, the, and, and uh, all the headlines in the last few years was, you know, the place is in turmoil, uh, as, as, a, as a jail itself. Like, I mean, jail is a very hard uh, place to, to be in, as uh, Yasser said, but uh, uh, it was even worse in terms of the standard of our, uh, our, our jails. So, an ND, ND, NDP government uh, recognizes the importance of rehabilitative services and correctional services, and we are committed to working to alleviate, you know, overcrowding issues in the detention center. Uh, so, in, in our uh, region, we need actually cultural appropriate uh, programs for for all those who are in the so what I have been uh, for example in my uh, uh, current work uh, before I uh, decided to run for uh, uh, office uh, I have been working with uh, Canadian Somali Mothers Association who, uh, which is an organization that has been advocating to improve the situation and, and the conditions in that jail uh, who have been fighting for to get uh, you know an equitable you know services for young Somalis and Muslims and, and Aboriginal people in, in, in the job. So, I, uh, as, if I'm elected, an NDP government will bring you know, cultural appropriate programs in our prison so that even those who you know, get into trouble with the law will get you know, uh, rehabilitative services that's appropriate culturally. And uh, uh, so, so that all I'm saying is that the issue is a systematic and, and there's also an issue of accountability, and we will address that. Uh, an NDP government will address the accountability piece with the police, with the correctional services, and will bring in culturally appropriate services and programs, uh, especially in Ottawa, uh, in Ottawa, which has been suffering for a long time. Thank you. Thank you.